Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, I've got the uh, hand for Captain Quark finished up, um, the little two-fingered T-Rex type hand here. Um, let's go ahead and try and put it on the character and finish off the glove. So I'm going to bring the character back. I've got him on the first layer, and he's, of course, not the right size for the hand. So let's uh, scale the hand down a bit. I'm going to move the cursor to the back of the hand here. I'm just going to select this edge right back here and then press Shift S and move the cursor to the selected. There we go. And now that the cursor is over here, I'm going to move the pivot point, the or the origin I should say, to the 3D cursor. And now when I move, rotate, and scale, it's going to do so around that point. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down like this and move it over and try and put it into place and get it the proper size. So I'm going to go to the front view here and just move this up and rotate it down and let's see if we can get it about the right size. It's not looking too bad. I've got his fingers kind of curled here but I think if those fingers were curled I think that would be about the right size. Actually let me scale it down just a little and move it right about there. All right, so we've got that, and let's put it into place over here now. All right, let's see how this works. So now what I want to do is, is take that edge, this edge right here, and begin extruding it up toward the arm. Um, here's the drawing of the glove. I've got a couple of reference images here. Let me bring these up and we can kind of see how the glove is shaped. It's kind of a triangle shape here um, and it looks like it flares out away from the body. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do that. So with that in mind I think what I'm going to do is begin by scaling this out just a bit. I don't I think this is a little too small here. I'll scale that out some. And then let's begin just scaling this up and see what we can get. I'll go ahead and hit E to extrude and move this up. Scale it out some. It's not going to follow perfectly the drawing I have, but let's see if we can get this to work. Now, I think first of all I'm going to want to begin making this a little bit more rounded. I think I'll turn on proportional editing. And I'll hit the G key and just see here's the influence. So I'll just begin pulling this out just a little bit. I'm trying to round off this part on the top and the bottom. Just a little. Alright, so now let's try again. I'll go back to the front and hit extrude and pull up again. Turn that proportional editing off for a minute here. All right, now I'll extrude again and pull this up. And once again, scale out some. And let's take a look at it over here. Yeah, I need to move that some. And once again, extrude and pull out. So we're getting there. Now we need to see which way it flares out. Let me go back to those it looks like it flares out towards the back of the hand both here and here so let's try that so here's the back of the hand it looks like it flares out this way then now one thing I'm gonna try I'd like to get these a little bit more rounded they're kind of flat on the top and the bottom and one thing we can do is I've got this loop tools um, panel over here and this can be enabled in your add-ons if you go to file user preferences and just type in loop you should come up with the mesh loop tools here and if you scroll this down you can see that you're going to see it in the toolbar of the 3d view which is what we have over here and all you've got to do is just add a check mark here to turn it on so once you do that you just go down and click save user settings and then you should be good to go now and in this loop tools panel we've got relax and if I open that up um, you've got different interpolations and things like that but usually the default works pretty well if I just select an edge and hit relax it kind of 
relaxes it into a circle, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to select this one and relax it. And this one. And this one. So it kind of helps round those out just a bit. All right, so now that we've got those rounded out a bit, let me begin moving them around to try and line them up. Now, so we say they flare out toward the back of the hand, so it would be this side. Let me use that proportional editing tool again, and this time I'm going to choose connected just to make sure it doesn't pull on the other side much. So with the proportional editing tool on, I just want to pull out, but I want to pull out in its local direction. Let's press Alt Space and change to local. That's not bad. Let's try normal. Is there any difference at all? Let's try normal. That's going out in the direction of the polygons here. So I'm just going to pull out just a bit. Uh, let me try that again. This time I'm going to use the G key and pull out some and just see while I scroll the mouse wheel how it does. All right, we're getting there, but I, but I also want to kind of tilt it a bit like I have in the drawing. So I think what I'll do is select, oh, select a point over on this side and move the cursor to it and then select this entire edge. I'm going to move the pivot point to the cursor by pressing the period key. And now when I rotate it, hit the R key, it'll rotate from that point. I better turn off proportional editing here, so I'll hit the O key two times to turn that off. And now if I hit the R key, I can rotate at that point. And then I can maybe scale out I want to go back to global mode with alt space and let me try and scale just in the X S X and now just in the Z S Z see if I can get that flare there there we go all right let me change the pivot point back with control comma and then I'll begin adjusting these again now Still got more to do, but I think that's getting there. I can come back in and begin using the Relax tool again. Well, that's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and mirror it over just to make sure, just to see how we're doing. I'm going to press Alt Space and go back to global mode here. And before we mirror it, we ought to apply the transformations. If we look at them, we've got rotation and scale here with all kinds of values in there we need those to be zeros and ones so I'll press control a and then rotation and scale and now I'm going to move the pivot point down to the center of the grid to the 3d cursor right here and now if we go and add a mirror modifier it'll mirror over as we expect it to I've got it mirroring over in the x-axis here all right, so that, I think, helps us take a look at whether or not this is going to work. It's, they seem too long to me, but um, we don't have the feet in yet. It's kind of dangerous to begin adjusting overall proportions of the character before you have all the parts in. So what we need to do next is to work on the boots. Um, ultimately, we're going to need to create an interior to the gloves. We'll begin extruding this edge in so it meets up with the arms so we can't see down into here, into empty space. But before we do that, we really need to get the boots in so we can adjust the overall proportions of the character. And then we can go in and begin working on the details. So we'll begin working on the boots in the next video. See you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling toolset as we build the mech character and the environment. 
we'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using Booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.